Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be ranking every single hero in the brand new Star Wars Battlefront collection. Every single playable hero and villain that is available in the Battlefront 2 portion of the game, we're going to be ranking from worst to best. Compared to the more modern Battlefront games, the heroes and villains in these old ones aren't as uh, distinct or unique as they are or what we're used to them being, but in these old games, they still have a bunch of properties and unique mechanics that can make them very much stand out. So we're going to be ranking all of the heroes in the entire game from worst to best and this is going to give you a good understanding of where heroes rank against each other and also give you a good rundown of their abilities their strengths their weaknesses and so on starting us off at the bottom of this list unfortunately is going to be Yoda as much as he's a lot of fun I do think he's overall the least effective hero in the entire lineup and for th the reason for that is generally his force abilities so the thing that defines heroes in this game besides their unique weapon are the abilities that they can do uh, using the force and Yoda only has a force push and a force pull while this can be very good and i think force pull is actually a great tool for closing the distance bringing people in for you know effective counter strikes uh force push is good but it's not nearly as good as it takes your opponent out of threat range if you're using a lightsaber i don't really like this ability a whole lot and the other upside that yoda has is he's very small so he can be hard to hit for troopers or anybody shooting guns outside of that he doesn't really have that many advantages to speak of his damage output's pretty low his dash attack is pretty good honestly but there's nothing to write home about honestly with Yoda and unfortunately I do think he's the least effective hero in the game coming up next is going to be Kiyadi Mundi uh, a hero that I want to like more and has a few abilities not included on the box so the way that these classic battlefronts have I've explained their force abilities and their weapon but usually there's another property or mechanic that makes this hero stand out or, or something specific to them and for Kiyadi Mundi you can sprint and do this consecutive rolling dash attack this is a very great move if you're playing against a large number of enemies and need to crowd control you need to cut people down quickly it's not good for one-on-one -on -one encounters at all so i think kiyoti mundi is much more set up for you know multiple targets instead of just one-on-one -on -one fights but other than that i don't really like him a whole lot there's nothing special about his moveset in particular and i think he's very low tier if i'm being honest now coming up next we have emperor palpatine a surprisingly low ranking for a potentially very good hero his moveset looks great on paper he's He's got force lightning and force choke force choke is practically the best move in the whole game so why is palpatine so low the problem is his movement and his damage output are just really poor outside of these abilities when an enemy gets close enough to start using your lightsaber the emperor just doesn't hit that hard like uh he doesn't swing very fast either and i don't know i just don't really prefer him as a hero it doesn't feel like he kills fast enough his dash attack is absolutely pathetic although he does have good movement options outside of that especially when jumping around but all in all i don't really prefer him as a hero and I think he's still fairly low tier uh, but coming up next we have Ayla Sakura on the light side and I like her a lot more I think she's flashy and I think she looks cool but uh, her moveset isn't perfect she's not terrible and her moveset is solid she's able to saber throw and force pull we talked about that one force pulls a very good move especially for one-on-one -on -one encounters and saber throw is excellent because it can even beat blocking enemies if it crosses them up and gets behind them it's a great option it's also a great ranged ability for dealing with troops on the fly and stuff and I think she handles uh infantry better than she does one-on-one -on -one hero encounters although she does okay in those situations she's just not the best I would say she's probably at the top of low tier uh not an amazing hero but certainly not the worst or bottom of the barrel by any means coming up next we have Boba Fett who was our first blaster hero and one with a very interesting move set now Boba Fett differs from Django particularly in their blasters and also some of their explosives uh Boba Fett has the debt pack whereas Django Fett has the timed bombs and you might think that will make Django Fett worse, but we'll talk about him a little bit later. Boba Fett is okay, and I think his best ability is the ability to stay in the air for as long as he does and throw down debt packs and deal out damage from a relatively safe distance. His jet pack isn't invincible, of course, and it will run out, but overall, I think he does okay against heroes, and he does very good against infantry. His flamethrower ability is not great. That goes for Django Fett as well. It's a very useless weapon, and I'm not even sure why it's on their toolkit, if I'm being honest. It's not very very good all things considered your best bet is going to be to use his just normal blaster and try to get headshots and then occasionally using rockets for blocking enemies or for crowds but other than that I just think he's kind of mid moving on to our next hero we have Luke Skywalker a very default like kind of run-of-the-mill saber hero he has the ability to saber throw and force push again while I generally like force pull better you can do some funny stuff like this with force push occasionally which can be very entertaining but overall I think he's fine he doesn't have any unique mechanics that much 
like you can do this cool looking swing in the air but he also has a lot of end lag when he comes out of this and hits the ground leaving you very vulnerable i just don't think i have that much positive to say about luke other than that i think his moveset's fine he's a very average hero uh just not one of my go-to picks next after that we have count dooku the old fart himself and he is a lot of fun honestly he plays best as a quite defensive saber hero his abilities to not only force choke and even force lightning these can be used in tandem with each other and i think he plays best in a defensive group like if he has other people around supporting him count dooku can be a little bit hard to kill and i think he does great just as being a presence on the battlefield not the craziest you know damage dealer or anything but very solid nonetheless up next we have chewbacca and if he's not a very effective hero he's at least the most hilarious one in the game uh his move set is something else he's got his classic bowcaster which can be either fired in a spread shot or a single charge after a couple of seconds that deals pretty moderately high damage he also has the ability to lay time bombs these things are pretty damn useless against anybody who's a sentient player with a brain but against the bots or the ai the time bombs can actually be pretty good and if you land right on top of them in the sweet spot it will absolutely one shot people it's pretty funny but the other thing is he also has this rage mechanic where he can increase his own damage output which is very good in tandem with his bowcaster he has another weapon which is a uh, guided missile rocket launcher which is just hella funny to be honest like it's the best thing i've ever seen in a star wars game uh but to be honest with you it's not very practical because even though you can self-guide this missile and you can do some pretty crazy things with it uh it leaves chewbacca completely vulnerable and open the entire time you're controlling it you're standing there just like a dumb tree while it's going all around and if you happen to miss your target or if you lose control of the missile uh you're probably cooked on the upside chewbacca is very tanky he's got good defense and he's got a lot of health so he's hard to take down you'll notice that at least so if you want to just be a big old tank and survive even though your damage output might be questionable chewbacca is a good idea this feels like an appropriate ranking because coming up just after him is going to be his pal han solo we got the boy himself and he's pretty solid as well i think they share a lot of similar properties he has a very different weapon he uses his classic dl44 which i think deals far more consistent damage than the bowcaster does you're able to be much more pinpointed with where you're dealing damage and who you're shooting and stuff and i think his gun is just far better than chewbacca's and his abilities i would argue are more sophisticated too uh chewbacca has the time bomb whereas han solo has the debt pack this is a manual detonation and you can even control it a little bit more depending on how you throw it there's a bit more tech involved there and then also you have this like uh defense rally thing where you can give yourself and your allies a bit of defensive capabilities besides that he's very straightforward he has a goofy ass sprint and he's just a chill guy overall moving on to our next hero we have general grievous uh grievous is an interesting case in the star wars battlefront lineup because while all, basically every hero has multiple abilities grievous has one he can become death he can deal damage that is his ability he also has a very good dash attack mind you and he's fairly tanky so he can eat some damage and deal out a ton himself he's a very easy hero to pick up so if you're just getting on the game and need somebody just to start out with and blow stuff up pick grievous you press one button and you win the game after that um hello there we have obi-wan kenobi uh he is special because i think he's one of the most fluid feeling jedi in the game hands down the thing that's cool about obi-wan is he has a very high double jump and he can swing in the air which may not sound like a big deal when you consider both his absolutely insane mobility and his solid force moves and his ability to swipe in the air without really committing to anything he's a very high skill ceiling hero if you know what you're doing all things considered i think obi-wan does really great against other heroes and troops he's super well-rounded and i think that's just kind of who he is as a jedi in general and they really capture that essence in this game coming up next we have samuel l jackson uh you knew he was going to be high tier no matter what the thing that makes him so excellent in battlefront 2 is not really his moveset because it doesn't look anything out of the ordinary he can basically force push and use his saber throw uh but the thing that makes him special is the ability that's not labeled on the box which is his ground slam if you jump in the air and press your attack button you're gonna come down fast with this big like aoe effect and the emperor can do this as well but i think it works better on mace windu's character and this can one shot just about any troop it's amazing for enemies that are blocked 
blocking to get around them or just deal some extra chip damage. Like, dude, this this move is stupid. I don't know how they hadn't labeled it on uh, Mace Windu. It doesn't even tell you can do that, but please take advantage of this. He's a very solid hero. I'd say pretty high tier. Just after that, we have Darth Maul, uh, a hero that I love because of his mobility and acrobatics. His force move set is solid. He's able to force push and use his saber throw. And these can be used in combination with each other. One of my favorite things to do is push enemies to the side and then get some extra damage by quickly switching to the saber throw and then tacking on some additional damage and if that doesn't finish them off you can get some saber swings in and you'll usually be fine like his speed his walking and sprint are amazing his dash attacks fantastic and i think he's all around great stats there's no real weaknesses with maul if i'm being honest he's very good now we're entering what i'm considering our top tier and we've got the boy himself darth vader so this is where you start to realize why i think force choke is the best ability in the game now they've adjusted it a little bit in this new remastered game in the original this was slightly more spammable and they've done a little bit to nerf it it seems like but you can essentially keep locking people into a force choke and get follow-up saber swings and if you don't exhaust all of your stamina ability you can practically do this infinitely it's a pretty insane strategy he can also saber throw and invader saber throw is very very far range he can also double jump and kind of hover in the air you can also force choke people while you're hovering which is pretty broken you can do a lot of crazy things with vader and this is where you start to realize that the game can get pretty complex from here vader's certainly a more complicated hero to play but i think he's a lot of fun once you kind of get a feel for him and, and understand it now moving on to our xbox dlc homie we have kit fisto so a lot of people probably haven't played with him because he was only available again through xbox dlc for the original battlefront 2 it was a very rare hero for anybody to really play with and uh for a lot of people who are jumping in for the first time Kit Fisto is excellent because of one specific ability, which is his Force Orb. This thing is beyond broken. The Force Orb is just what it says on the box. It's this big old projectile that just chunks like half or more of someone's HP away. It's unbelievable. If you can get one Force Orb and then follow up with like one Saber Strike or two, you're taking out people left and right. Kit Fisto is crazy good, and he also has the consecutive dash attack ability like Kiati Mundi does. Again, not super practical for fighting one-on-one opponents but very very excellent for fighting multiple enemies at once coming up just after him we have Django Fett so you're probably like what the hell chopper like what are you talking about how is Django Fett this far away on the tier list from Boba Fett who was very low uh, I think it's all down to their main weapon. The blaster between Jango Fett and Boba Fett is absolutely unreal. Uh, Jango Fett's kills so much faster. DPS is insane. Other than that, they have practically the same moveset. I mean, they've got the flamethrower and the rockets. The only difference is Jango Fett has the timed bombs, which again, against actual players is not going to be very effective. Uh, but against, you know, normal AI enemies is, will be fine. But I think Jango Fett is overall the better hero, specifically because of his weapon. Nothing against Boba Fett uh, personally, but but I think Jango Fett has an edge here by far. Tracking into our top three is going to be Anakin Skywalker, and this is everything I like about Darth Vader, but just turned up a notch, and that probably makes a lot of sense. He's got practically the same force move set. He's got a bit more better general mobility, and force choke being so overpowered, Anakin is really able to capitalize on that. You can lock people in their animations and prevent them from doing anything and just simply dump out damage if you get close enough. Like, it seems like an unfair strategy, and this was a lot more abusable in the old battlefronts but you can still take advantage of it making anakin uh and definitely top three hero in the entire game period coming up next ultimately she could have been placed at a few other spots on this list but i did decide her to put at number two this is the other dlc hero besides kit fisto that we mentioned and this is asajj ventress although i have to admit in battlefront 2 she looks a lot more just like an inquisitor than she does ventress like jesus what is this that's fine honestly you know let's just let's just move past it let's ignore that she looks like an inquisitor and not uh asajj ventress whatsoever i'm not really sure what they were thinking with this one but anyways the things that make her special are the fact that she does play a lot like Ayla sakura they have similar animations and even similar damage output but her force ability her force push who cares about that we we don't need that but she has this ability called star blades and this is kind of like a shotgun like buckshot spread effect of these little red projectiles that can bounce around and hit off walls and these can ricochet into enemies these can do all kinds of crazy things and they deal big damage i think she's excellent for this this move by far sets her apart. 
If they replaced Force Push with Choke, uh, it would be over. She would probably be the best uh, villain in the entire game without a doubt. However, that spot is going to be reserved for our final hero, and that is going to be Princess Leia. She is in a league of her own, mostly because of her weapon. Um, this gun deals illegal damage. I This this needs to be nerfed. Like, I, I don't get how they got away with this. She can, like, two-shot Darth Vader in the head. Like, when you're playing with her, your jaw is going to drop how quickly you're killing people, and from the range that you can do it as as well that's a big thing is saber heroes yes can block her shots but only for so long and they don't have much options to deal with you at range you can actually be a menace with her and if they do happen to close in on you she has an ability to go completely invulnerable temporarily and she can even you know administer and spread this to other allies play is very problematic she's going to be very difficult to deal with if you're playing against an enemy who's using them and they even somewhat know what they're doing she'll be very hard to take down she also has thermal detonators for her other equipment you know just regular grenades nothing too crazy going on there but uh if you are able to close on in on her with a lightsaber and she doesn't have her ability she's pretty easy to take down doesn't have a ton of health so that's at least good news but i am going to say out of the entire ranking and all of the factors considered princess leia is going to be the most effective hero in star wars battlefront the classic collection let me know what you thought on my list and also if you want to watch me make more star wars content i'm working on this new channel called galactic scoop you can check it out using the link below go subscribe to it i'm making some cool stuff over there and i'll see you guys over in the next one but have a great rest of your day and peace out